Hi everyone and welcome to this, my video on bear rings. Yes, my name is Darren from Maths Guru. I, I really should have found something I could have spelt better. Uh, it's absolutely free to sign up if you head over there. And all of these videos and the stuff I'm gonna write on behind for your summary books and what have you, it's all there ready for you to do. But before I get started, please do me a massive favor. Can you subscribe to my YouTube channel? Yes, I know it's very needy and you would imagine that I would have a life by this point, but I love recording these videos. And the thrill I get at the end of the day when three people subscribe is incredible, right? Very few people watch my content. Um, and so sitting here, sometimes I go, yeah, why am I doing this? Uh, but I'm doing it because I want to help people. So if you can subscribe, greatly appreciated. And tell your mates and your teachers, hopefully, I know that's really uncool, isn't it? Tell your teacher. It's like anyone's gonna walk up to me and say, hey, I found a really good resource online. Yeah, if you can though, hopefully it might be able to help other students. Right, what are we doing? We are gonna know what a bearing is and know how to draw bearings and draw diagrams and all those type of things as well. So fairly interesting concept. I think it's relatively easy. A lot of my students turn around and go, it's so hard. It shouldn't be hard. It shouldn't be hard, trust me. Let's see where we go here. All right, now, so far in previous videos we've been doing with trigonometry. So we've had Sokata, so ka toa and we've had Pythagoras' theorem, c squared equals a squared plus b squared, right? They all deal with right angle triangles. And there are right angle triangles everywhere, all right? And so we can use these things here to help us find angles and side lengths and so many other things. That's like really, really important. But we also need to know how to use this in terms of something called a bearing, right? So when I go on a journey, I'm actually gonna go a particular distance and I'm not gonna go straight everywhere because I'm gonna go through certain angles and stuff. So if you're on a boat, you're gonna go and head off and then you're gonna turn a little bit and you're gonna head for a distance and turn for a bit distance. And that's really what is a bearing. Now, what is a bearing? There are four rules for bearings as far as I'm concerned. One, right, and if you write these in your summary book, you should be fine. One, that they are always, hmm, I say always, they're generally referenced from something called a north line. So wherever we start, right, and wherever we end up, we would draw something called a north line. It's really just a reference for us to be able to then draw an angle. So if I, for example, start here, imagine that's where I'm currently here in Melbourne, right? And I'm gonna go on a journey. I would initially draw a north line. It was a vertical line, and I know that's not even vaguely vertical, but I tried my best. Um, and I would draw a north line. Now the reason we do this is because then we're gonna turn an angle. And then we turn an angle by going clockwise, yes? Now, what I do is I always use a pen or a pencil and I put it straight on that north line and then I turn clockwise through the angle that I'm given, right? So again, I would then effectively be turning clockwise through a particular angle, right? The angle is always given to three digits. So I wouldn't say it's 90 degrees. I'm not saying I'm gonna turn through 90 degrees. I would turn through 0, 090 degrees. Obviously, if I turn through 110 degrees, I would say 110 degrees and we use a capital T to denote any bearing where we've used the north line as a reference. Okay, so a capital T is called true bearing. It's called a true bearing because we're using true north, right? So that to me doesn't sound overly complicated. Again, bearings can be measured from anywhere. To be perfectly honest with you, if I was to say here, and just point that way and turn through 60 degrees or 0, 060 0 degrees, that's perfectly okay, but we wouldn't be able to use a T there. If I had T 0, 060 0 degrees, it tells me I have to draw a dot and my start point, I always have to be turning north before I turn my 60 degrees, right? So that T means draw a north line, really important. Uh, always have three digits. So examples here, as I've given, four degrees would be given by T004, 75 degrees, T075. By the time you get to 100 and 270 degrees, you'd be fine. Would I have T400 degrees? Probably not, why? Because it's 360 degrees in a circle and you're gonna basically have turned around and gone back by 60, no, for 340 degrees. That was really bad maths, all right? So, but it is so important that you realize you always move clockwise. Never eat shredded wheat, all right? So again, using these type of things is really, really funky. Uh, it's important to know about compass directions as well. So never eat shredded wheat or never eat soggy wheat bix. Uh, basically just tells you that the main compass points are north, never eat shredded wheat, or never eat soggy wheat bix, all right? Never eat, and then between those, 
are things like northeast, southeast, southwest, and northwest. All right, and there's all sorts of compass bearings that go between those points as well. I'm not even getting into that. So southeast, if we were looking at southeast here, yes, is it southeast? All right, that would have a bearing of T135 degrees. So I'm going to write T135 degrees. You want to say, how would I know that? Well, Remember, we have to start from north and we have to turn clockwise through an angle to get to where we want to be. So we know that to go from north to east must be 90 degrees, so there's 90 degrees. We know that each of these little bits here must be half of 90 degrees because a right angle split in half, so they would be 45 degrees. And thereby, if I was to add all of that together with 90 and 45, it would give me the 135 degrees. Okay, so again, using those angle rules becomes actually really, really important. So here's an example of stating a true bearing. All right, so from the diagram shown below, uh, the true bearing, or for the diagram shown, give the true bearing of A from O. Now this is one of the most important parts of bearings that I can't get that I need to get through to, to you.